So good afternoon, uh, everyone. Um, welcome to the last lecture in the very nice course on mastering uh, uh, pandas uh, that uh, Benjamin Bart from the CHPC is, is offering. Uh, today, I think uh, it's about more advanced uh, techniques and real world applications, more or less. Yeah. And, um, and Benjamin, people are very keen to hear how the story evolves. So please, over to you. And everybody knows the rule of the game. Yeah, there is a Q&A and so on and so forth. Yeah, please, Benjamin, over to you. No, thanks so much, Prof. And uh, thank you everybody for uh, joining today. Um, yeah, so this is the last um, uh, lecture um, in, the, um, in this mini school. So um, hopefully I'd like to kind of conclude in some items and, um, and today just focus on, um, I guess, more advanced but topics. But um, uh, I, again, my, my you know, goal was also to kind of cater the course based on you know, feedback from you know, everybody that joined. So um, we're gonna cover a few topics and some of the questions as well that, that were uh, or question or comments that are posed in, in, in the feedback form. So we're going to cover that today. Um, just a bit of um, you know insight or feedback. Uh, I wanted to get a bit of insight from from Prof as well, but um, you know skills versus degree. So this is um, two quotes that I, I find uh, is useful uh, just to put things in, into context. Um, somebody did ask me. Um, or make a comment in one of the feedback forms regarding, you know, uh, you know, what jobs you can get, you know, in data science and in pandas and whatnot. So um, hopefully this gives a bit of insight. So, and this is from Richard Branson. So hopefully everybody knows who he is. Um, employers um, want to see that you have the practical skills and experience to get the job done. Um, and then from Satya Nadella, from CEO of Microsoft. The idea of a degree being the only pathway to success is an outdated notion. Companies should rather focus on hiring based on skills and experience rather than just a piece of paper. So uh, I'm assuming most um, everyone here um, is in some form of a postgraduate uh, degree. Um, so I think it's useful to sometimes have the perspective of, um, you know, what can you do with your uh, degree and being in industry for uh, for, for some years, I guess I can give some insight. And um, there is still a, um, a demand for having a, uh, uh, a degree of, of some sort. It gives you some um, level of um, uh, stance with, at the company. And, and it shows that you've the, the, the primary thing that you actually learn with a degree is how to learn. Um, not necessarily skills. So those skills you're going to have to learn, you know, whatever application that you have. But you, you you figure out how to learn and and you know work out problems. That's really the skills, primary skills, hopefully that that you have did, did, um, kind of found out and deduced. Um, and the skills, you know, you can also learn on the side, and you will be learning skills as, as you go along. But ultimately, any company or corporate company um, just needs really the skills that you uh, have have developed over time. And I think definitely over um, a period of COVID, where um, you know skills became the importance of skills became more prevalent, um, kind of has shifted the way um, companies uh, hire, uh, where it's focused more on skills based to, to to some degree, not not always, rather than just like a, a piece of paper. Um, so yeah, I would like to maybe get some comments or questions on that as well. Um, if you have anything, you can put it in the chat. Um, do you agree or disagree? What's more important, skills versus the degree? Um, so maybe you can put some comments in the chat. And can also see some, some uh, thumbs up as well, just to see everyone is alive and well on the other side. So just a thumbs up. Quite a few there. Okay, cool. All right. So any comments or chat or comments or questions about this? You know, feel free to put in the chat. Um, regarding what I just mentioned. Okay, so what are we gonna cover today? Okay, is um, again, a bit of admin. Um, the, form uh, the feedback I got from forms were quite useful. So I'm gonna, again, in spite of cover a few questions because they also, um, let me just stop my video. 
the the form feedback also um i, I guess um I, I use that to kind of give or use practical examples of um uh practical examples of how we can you know cover the content that i plan to 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 cover so we, we are kind of in line of of uh, what, what to expect um and then we'll look at you know those mastering pandas um in general like um certain aspects or more advanced techniques which is all forms part of what we'll do today okay so again um just a bit of um, admin so all the content I'll be covering is already uploaded to the GitHub repository. Um, all the videos for the previous lessons um, are on the Nitex YouTube channel. So I think there's a question in the Q&A for the previous recorded lectures. So maybe somebody can just add that there. Um, they are there already. So today's lesson will probably also be, be there too. Um, and then I would like the form to be actually, um, if you can, pe if can people start um, actually doing the form um soon um actually start now already um because there's a few questions i have just on, on the course um and any feedback as well so yeah that's a bit of feedback so first i have to do the form and then also there's there's a discussion section on the github after the mini school finishes if you have any questions or comments more, more than well to reach me on the on, on github over there um yeah so okay let me get the form out um just copy this and just copy this link to the chat um put it in the chat so long give me a second What I can do. Okay, so there's a form. So please go through those. Um, Okay, Sim, so some, can somebody just get the YouTube channel link um, from Nitex and I can put it in the chat as well. So there's, uh, put the form, so please start filling in the form. Um, it's quite useful. And then we'll start with the lesson for today. Um, I'll put the, um, this is also the uh, GitHub repo I put in the chat. I'll put the Nitex YouTube channel on the repo there as well. So I'll do that. Somebody can just get that um, YouTube Nitex link then i'll add that shortly okay so let's have a look at what we're going to cover today so yes yeah, we start with the form um just complete that okay so there is yeah so there's the link let me just get that. I can put it in GitHub as well at the same time. Um, good to play. I think it's actually about playlists. Let me just look. Yeah, so this is the um, so this is the site. So if you go to Nutex, um, yeah, so this is some videos. And if you go to videos, you can see the, um, yeah, so there's Mastering Pandas, so there's various videos on that. So I'll just put that in the in the link so long. Well, I'll put that in the GitHub repo. So if you go to GitHub repo, you can, I can edit it here. All recordings. So that's there and then, okay. All right, so what are we gonna cover today? Um, so these are a few questions and comments that I got, which I think helps just with everyone. Um, I mean, it, it's kind of guided in what I wanted to cover already today and a bit of recap on what I've done before. So the first question was from a text file. Um, I want to produce a four-tile plot. 
where each tile compares four quantities. In the end, I have to produce roughly 16 plots. Can you assist with an example? So we've kind of done this before using the Seaborn K plot. I'm using the iris data set, but I've done a simpler or an, another example. So um, I used um, uh, a text file. The text file has um, some four columns of data, some just some random values, not too useful to analyze. And what I'm doing is um, I'm reading in the uh, text file uh, with pandas. Um, and there's no header, so I'll just ignore that. And then um, I'm naming the columns of each data, column one, two, three, and four. Um, and that's um, what you, you know, need to do if you don't have any columns there. Um, and yeah, so this will, and then we use subplots. So we have done subplots before. And subplots just gives you, allows you to create multiple plots in one figure. So this creates a two by two grid. Um, so each plot will compare two columns of data. Um, you can obviously customize the plot titles and axis and everything else. Um, and yeah, so for example, if I want to plot this, um, you can specify the different axes. Uh, so there'll be four plots, uh, zero, one, two, and three. So there's four, four plots. Um, and if I, if I uh, plot this, you can see what it looks like. Um, yeah, so let me just wait until it finishes. So this is the first one. So this is the two by two plot. Um, again, this is using subplot. Um, how you plot the data? Again, the data isn't too you know interesting, but I'm just showing you how to do um, a reading from a text file, um, having a tile plot of, of multiple plots, and then this is um, this is how you can do uh, you know this is 16 plots as well. So this is actually using the SNS or CC born pair plot, but the same method that you use here, you can just you know, specify it for your 16 plots as well. Um, and then I did another example. Um, you can also use something, this is using a browser if you want to work with a browser instead, um, which usually looks a bit nicer using, uh, using Plotly. Um, where did it come up there, over here? So this one usually looks a bit uh, nicer, has the graphics a bit nicer to, to present. Let me just wait for that uh, to load. Question for the feedback form. It seems you cannot choose more than one option. Okay, all right, so let me change that. I can, um, question four. And change that uh, multiple answers. Okay, so quickly, so I just made it multiple. Um, you can choose multiple answers now. So hopefully that helps. Okay, so here's our plot. So this is using Plotly. So, uh, but it looks a bit nicer. Gives you a bit more options. You know, you can, you can zoom to certain sections um, if you want. You can switch on the the traces. You can um, pan and move. So I plot these quite quite nice in in that way. It uh, looks nicer to, to use as well and more presentable. Um, and then this one was quite similar. Um, I think this one I just tried to uh, plot an image actually. So this is using pillow. So pillow allows you to manipulate or you know add images to plots as well. So I'm not sure. Yeah, this one you can look at it. It's not too interesting. Um, well. Oh, there we go. So a similar plot that we've done before. So this actually created it as an image and then I put that into a browser. Um, yeah, okay, so that's the question regarding um, um, a text file. You know, if you want to make tile plots, this is, you know, different ways you can do it. Um, the next one is cyclone tracking. So again, I, I wasn't given any um, sample data, so you can always give me sample data um, and, and GitHub. I can put the data there. So I just kind of created, you know, random um, data. So what it did was I used NumPy uh, just to create random data um, uh, for latitudes, longitudes, and intensities for cyclones. 
Um, so this really is random data. And then I created a, a dictionary that stores that data and then put that dictionary into a data frame. Okay, so um, again, just 200 uh, sample uh, data set um, of random data specifying latitude, longitude, and intensity for cyclone. Um, and then, and then, yeah, so when you plot that, and then I'll just plot the intensities, like the question was, was really about um, pl uh, plotting and um, the, the data and time series analysis of it. Um, so if we run this, um, this is a uh, cyclone location intensity. So um, again, this is random data. So you probably you can't see any trends or, or whatnot, but if you have actual data, you can, uh, based on the location and intensity, you can maybe you know, gather some insights in, into data. Um, again, this is random, so not very useful, but this is time series data showing the cyclone intensity over time um, or, or over the date. So this is also something you can um, investigate as well. Um, yeah, so that was the question just on, you know, multiple plots, time series, and, and cyclone tracking. Again, I didn't have data to work with, so I just used, um, uh, you know, just my random data. Hopefully that answers those two questions that um, you guys had. So another question was, how does pandas and NumPy, NumPy work in hand in hand? So I did kind of answer this question before. So if anybody has an answer for this, I'd like to you know, hear from you. Um, but um, like I mentioned before, that um, uh, you know Python on its own is limited for data science. There's a lot of things you can do with Python, but on its own, it's it's quite uh, limited. Um, and with different libraries, you can obviously do a, a lot more 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 things more efficiently. So um, we have libraries like NumPy and SciPy um, that allows you to do uh, matrix manipulation and working with um, you know, tabular data a lot easier and doing aggregation or, or kind of matrix multiplications um, quite, quite easily. Um, Pandas on that is actually built on top of NumPy. So when you ask like, how does it work hand in hand? Well, Pandas is uh, kind of built on top of NumPy already. So um, they kind of work together um, on its own. Um, and a lot of the NumPy methods and functions you can actually use in Pandas already. Uh, so I, I did show this before. Um, so a lot of things you can like um, use in NumPy, you, you can use in Pandas, like those, those built-in um, methods and functions. Um, and also if you look at a, uh, if you try to highlight um, or select um, a series, the type of data it is, it, it, it'll actually be a NumPy array, right? So um, you can think like everything is actually built on a, on a NumPy array um, in, in, in Pandas. So they definitely work hand in hand because Pandas is actually built on top. Okay, we had another question about um, spectral, um, using Pandas for spectral data peak integration. So again, this person didn't specify much so um, I couldn't really do much here, but hopefully this will give some insight. Um, so spectral data. So um, I have some, you know, uh, very generic data of wavelengths and absorbers. Um, and what I'm doing, I'm, I'm reading the data and I'm creating the names for the um, for the columns because there aren't any names. And then. Um, and then what I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm selecting a subset of data within the desired wavelength range, for example, if, if that's important. So this is something we've done before. So this is a bit of a recap, which is useful. So I'm selecting a, a subset of data or sub data frame almost. Um, so all the wavelengths above 210 and less than 230. So if we, if we actually look, look at that, um, uh, like above 210 and below 230, well, it's actually not much. Um, should actually make it a bit larger, make it maybe 290, I think. Um, just to specify a larger subset. So I can integrate the absorbance values of the corresponding wavelength, wavelength range using the traps. Um, I think it's trapezoidal um, integration. This is from a SciPy library. 
Um, it could actually, yeah. Chep was waiting said, okay, right. So we haven't really covered sci-fi, but um, it's a scientific computing package. Um, that's very, very useful. So again, um, a simple example. Um, not sure if it's useful why I was in that one. Or what is actually, yeah. Okay, so, um, so here's a bit of a question I want to ask. Um, uh, to see if somebody can figure this out. Um, I get the error, right? So it can help me try to figure this out. So I get this error that says that um, it's not supported between string and int. All right, so um, what, what does that uh, tell me? How, how do I kind of investigate how to find the error? Um, well, it tells me what the error is, but how do I kind of figure out what the problem of, of this is? Because the... the I go to the um, data frame. Um, there is a data there. Um, so it 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 is there already. Um, so what is the the problem? I mean, how 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 do I, how can I resolve this? It's saying that the um, distance between or the um, I can't use a string and an int. I'm trying to say is uh, this value wavelength bigger than two hundred ten? But if you can see in the data frame, um, there's actually a value wavelength um, and absorbance, right? So there was a problem of how read in the data. So there's a few ways to resolve this. Uh, how can I resolve it? Yeah, that, that's quite that's correct, Jane and and um, Walker. Yeah. So so what I can do is. Um, there's one thing I can do, which is you can skip skip these rows. So what I can do is I can just uh, skip that row because as you can see, um, I can skip that row and then it should work. Yeah, so um, in that case, yeah, so the answer is correct. So I, I just uh, skipped that row. So um, again, when you spoke about um, um, uh, reading in CSV file, reading data, sometimes you even might have a header of information, like a whole bunch of, um, you know, text that supports the data and may, might, that might, you know, obviously influence your, um, you know, the, uh, anything you try to do. So I want to get rid of it. So you can just use skip rows and be like, skip the first 10 rows is just like the, the, uh, the meta text that describes the, the data, which you don't really want. You just want the actual number, uh, uh, the rows and columns that have the information in it. So skip rows uh, works it out, and you know what you know, does some uh, calculation. Um, and another thing you could have done is, for example, if there was a um, problem with, um, let me change data here. If this was maybe uh, spectral was working with spec data. If, for example, this was a string over here, so this value over here, and I try to run this code. Okay, it reads it in as, as a number already, so don't uh, don't have to worry about that. So, so sometimes if uh, it, it did convert it, so sometimes you you find that you know the whole column of data is full of strings. So what you can do is you can um, just convert that whole column. You, you force it into being a um, uh, into a float, for example, or an integer. So, for example, in, in that case, if if I'm reading in a, actually strings or text, which 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 are numbers, I can just convert that in, in, into a float, a floating point or integer if, if it's integers. Okay. So. Uh, okay. So a few comments here. So let's go to the top. Can I have the previous recorded lecture, please? Yeah, it's the link was, just look at the YouTube link above in the chat. Uh, how can I introduce a latitude and longitude data of cyclone in maps? Okay, so this is from uh, Gulso. So, um, so what I first recommend is going to dataviz.com. Um, if you want uh, uh, map data, and then we can look at um, we can look at how to get that. So where's where's that lat? 
Um, where is it? Latitude one one. Uh, it was cyclone data, right? So where was this one? So if you go to the, there's a maps one somewhere. Um, somewhere there's a map one. Here we go, maps. Um, so I'm going to go to map, path and gallery. It gives you some examples of how to work with, with maps. So, so it's I mean, it's just input, you know, you know where whatever latitude, longitude, and you can um, you can input that, and I'll show you on the map. You obviously choose what position, what map uh, location you want. Um, and then you can maybe like for the different intensity for a cyclone, you can have like different colors or sizes of, of, of circles or ha ha, if you want. I'm just waiting for this to load. So yeah, so this is, um, there's a few map options you can use. So GeoPandas, GeoPlot. Um, there we go. Okay, so there's a, an example background map. Different types of maps you, you can use. Um, Cartogram expert bubble. I think maybe bubble is something you might want to use. Um, bubble map. Yeah, maybe like the like a circle of the intensity um, you can use. So they they have like circles and, and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, this is something you can look. Oh, there we go. So there's the bubble map. Um, but you can, you know, look at this. There's an example of, of how I'd use it. Um, yeah. So you can look at this. If, if you want, just go to data viz. I'll put this in the chat if you want to have a look at it. Um, okay. So that's that. So, okay. Record. No, the sign appears that there's a type here. Print out that. It's fine. So paste it to Google. Over this in the previous lecture, um, you can access it. Yep. I can NumPy provide support for numeric operations and multi dimensional. Yeah. It's fine. Instead of, okay. Okay. So that's it there. All right. Um, that's the cyclone data. Um, spectral stuff is also, is also done. Nothing more there. Okay, there was a question about net CDF files. So um, I'm not really going to cover it because it's, um, you'd need a um, and you install extra libraries, but um, there is um, I did, there's a useful link that is in the notes that you can look at that shows how to read in net CDF files. Um, and there are two well-known libraries, so XArray and NetCDF, um, that can read in a CDF file, NetCDF file. Um, and then you can also then convert it to a pandas data frame to, to work with. So I can look at this link, um, but it's quite um, um, it's quite well known, um, and there's a lot of support for 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 this library. So you definitely can use it. Okay, so last two uh, last two things I'm going to discuss is machine learning and NLP. Those are the two questions I got also from from the feedback. Um, so which kind of covers like the more advanced aspects of pandas, and again, this is not really pandas specific because pandas is just a tool for um, a tool um, uh, that you use to maybe do pre-processing, prepare the data to to analyze it, and then you know you'll develop your models and how and whatnot. Uh, but I've, I've got quite a few questions about it, so I'll, I will uh, cover it. Um, because the question: Does data to this have principal coordinate analysis? Um, I'm not sure, Carl. You're going to have to have have to have a look at that. Um, I, I don't know. Um, you can have a look. I'm not sure what that is. So, um, yeah, you can have a look. Find something you can let me know. And if you have examples, again, just uh, you know, put it in the discussion on GitHub. Um, if you have data, if you, if, you have, if you have a data set you want to put, put, it, put it on the um, GitHub link, and then you can you know discuss it there and can maybe help you further on. Um, so... Let me just check here. Okay, so moving on to machine learning. So um, let's have a look. 
So there's several popular machine learning libraries that can be used with pandas, right? Um, to build and train models, and here, here are a few. So you get scikit-learn or, or sklearn is the, the, the first one. Um, it's quite a popular open source library. Um, it's for like classical machine learning, um, provides various modules for classification, uh, regression and clustering. Um, and it's probably the easiest uh, machine learning library to, um, to learn and to, to use. Um, that being said, uh, that limits your, you know, customization, right? Um, then you get TensorFlow, um, which is an open source machine learning library, um, primarily used for for deep learning, deep learning model, or for deep le learning models. Um, and obviously, you can use pandas to pre-process the, the the data um, as well. Then you get get Keras, which is kind of just on top of uh, TensorFlow. Um, it makes it a bit easier to, to use, um, uh, quite similar to, to scikit-learn, um, and also used for to, to train deep learning uh, models. And you can use pandas. Um, just can be used with pandas, again, just to prepare the data. So again, scikit-learn is generally considered easiest to learn and, and to use, followed by Keras, and then TensorFlow and PyTorch. So tens TensorFlow and PyTorch, are, they're more like fully customizable uh, libraries. So you can create your own custom models, perform low level operations, right? So if you have advanced knowledge of machine learning, um, you know, uh, TensorFlow or PyTorch would be more suitable for you. You're still beginning, you know, uh, you know, this journey on, on um, um, you know, with machine learning, then, you know, st st stick with scikit-learn or, or sklearn. Um, yeah, so the flexibility can make more difficult. Um, compared to like libraries like like scikit-learn, so PyTorch, yeah, so that's another machine learning library. Um, also, quite a, has a powerful API for both for building for building deep learning models. Um, it can use it with pandas to pre-process data. Um, it's known for dynamic computation graph and um, kind of deep but complex uh, models. Um, also. Uh, XG boost, you get many boosters or um, gradient boosting libraries. I just mentioned one here. Um, it's fast and efficient information for gradient boosting algorithm. Um, you get Microsoft Boost. There are quite a few. Um, and for building training machine learning models, um, again, Pandas will be your uh, primary tool to, again, do EDA, to clean the data, prepare it before you actually do anything with. Um, uh, any model you want to build, you first want to uh, do EDA, look at the data, and analyze it. Um, and then, if you need to clean it, you know, you know, if you have empty data or missing cells, or you know, prepare the data. If you have large data, you need to sort it out before you develop your model. So, pandas is usually like your uh, first step, um, and then you know, developing model will be your second one. And then there's an iterative process uh, you you should use. Um, yeah, so here's a, just a quick example using, um, I think I have two examples here, um, using sklearn. Um, again, using the the Iris data set. So it actually has an Iris data set built in because it's such a small data set and quite popular. Um, uh, it has it built in already. So it's reading in the data. So this is a bit of a different way to read in a built, built, built in data set. Um, and what it does, so here it reads in the Iris data set as a data frame um, and then splits the data set into training and testing sets. So I'm not going to go into you know, why you um, um, why you choose the uh, you know, difference between training and testing. That's another it's machine learning mini school on its own. I might have been covered already, but this is typically what, what you'll use. Um, and here's a, just, a, you know, for example, a built-in classifier um that's you can that uh cycle learn comes with just uh, evaluates the accuracy of the cl classifying testing the data so if i run this um you get um that you have 0 0.93 right it's not it's really a trivial example really so it's not really something you can um I mean, you would really use but just to kind of show you what you can do with SQL learn um, and for example, the only one thing you um, use with pandas is just reading in the data. 
Sometimes you might have to prepare the data, clean it and whatnot. That's where, where pandas will obviously can come in. Um, another simple example is maybe like a developing a linear model. Um, so if you have like uh, card data here, just to maybe predict the linear regression model to, to predict something. So if I have a whole bunch of car models, um, the different type of cars, the model, the, the volume I mean, in terms of the size, the weight of the car and the CO2 emissions. So from this data, we can kind of find a way if we can, well, the idea is the hypothesis is to predict um, the CO2 emissions based on the volume and the weight, right? So um, sklearn has a quite a nice linear model for multiple variables. So multiple linear regression model. Uh, so we have our, um, uh, so are we using uh, weight and, and volume and our target is CO2, right? So that's, we first develop our, our, our module, uh, our model, um, and then we can break, predict the CO2 emissions uh, based on any input that you give it, right? So if we have um, some weight of 2,300 and some volume of uh, 1,300, um, we can, you know, do a prediction and get a value of 100 to 107, whatever that's, um, that unit is in um, for the CO2 emissions for that specific vehicle. So this is how just a simple um, prediction algorithm um, that you can work with. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's, again, a um, brief overview of machine learning. Um, so we have scikit-learn, scikit-learn, TensorFlow, Keras, uh, PyTorch and XG boost. Um, so Tobele, so among the four, which one usually provides accurate results? Um, well, that's a very open-ended question. Um, and it's like, how long is a piece of string? Um, it depends. Depends how you, um, uh, it depends how you set up your model. Um, how you set up your data. Um, it depends on many things. So the main difference again is um, the customization. So scikit-learn is easy to use, but this customizable um, uh, Keras or TensorFlow, well, TensorFlow specifically, you can design your models. You can de develop beyond custom models, um, different layers and, and, and whatnot. So it's really what, what, what you want to do and TensorFlow is catered more for deep learning. Uh, neural networks, so it's different application. So it's you can't really say which one provides more accurate results. Um, if somebody has maybe experience with using both, maybe you can put that in the comment. And if, uh, as well, you know. Um, but from my side, it really it depends. Um, okay, so that's some insight into. Too. Uh, hi, Benjamin. Are you back? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm back. I'm not sure okay, what. Okay. Excellent. I don't know. Yeah. Um, okay. So yes. Yeah, so yeah. So pandas is a tool that, that you're going to use for um, cleaning the data, preparing it, doing the EDA, and it'll be iterative process. So once you do your model, you can um, you know use pandas again just to and analyze the, the the results. Okay. Um, so yeah, so again, so now we can look at a bit of machine uh, NLP. So maybe like a subset, you could say, of machine learning. Um, 
So a few, uh, there's a few popular libraries. So um, for NLP, so NLTK is Natural Language Toolkit, uh, probably the most popular one. Um, there, there are there are many for different applica different applications. Um, so this is just you know maybe some popular ones. Um, so it provides various models for processing text, including tokenization, stemming, limitization, out of speech tagging. Um, again, it's pandas used to uh, process pre process and the data. Uh, Spacia as well, also a useful uh, library. Um, it's another library um, for processing text. Um, can also get sentiment classification as well, and text classification. Uh, most familiar with 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 NLTK and Spacy, um, text blob, um, another library. Um, you know, you get some sentiment and analysis as well. Like for example, um, you know, if you have uh, you know some feedback, well, a, a data set from posts from Instagram, um, trying to find the sentiment of those posts. Like, are they positive or negative? Happy, sad? You know, it's uh, very uh, simple examples like that, but obviously it goes into more more depth. Um, non phrase extraction, you know, extracting uh, parts of speech, um, those, those kind of things. So you can you can yeah, that's a lot of things you can do. Um, Gensum as well. I think I have used this before. Okay, this is similarity retrieval of large uh, uh, of large data sets. Um, so trick training models. Um, so a very useful library. And scikit learn as well. Um, I did put this here, but I mean, it's um, you, you'll use it with um, your other libraries like NLT, Kispacy, text blocks, text blob, and Jensen. All right, so I have a two examples. Um, I just want to show you one using NLTK and the other one using Spacy. Uh, I think there are a few comments. Wait, there's a question. Yeah, so Adishina, yeah, check the data type of wavelength and convert to integer. That's fine. There's a Q&A. And from the chat, um, the chat uh, from Wilco, a quick question to when accessing data frame data with brackets. Sometimes a double bracket is used uh, during a change to data frame. When, when and what uh, format should you use? Okay. Um, I did kind of discuss it a little bit. Um, I think um in the previous lesson or not um this is how you access data the single versus double bracket um i'll maybe cover that um in in, in a short while uh, but let me just finish this um and if there are any other questions okay on, on the questions and i do see um yeah, only 25 people have responded on the form so please um um I'll give you a few minutes just to actually do the form now. I'll just stop for like a few minutes. Before we we'll finish uh, with this NLP section. So please do the form. Um, I would like your, your feedback. It's, it is valuable. So I'll wait until uh, a few minutes. So I can have time to do the form. Okay. Um, check that is a form. Shorten your uh, copy. There you go. There's a you use the latest one of the sent. Um. Yeah. I'll just give uh, everybody time to do that. So yeah, please complete the form.
sorry here, here's a link for the form i, I put it in, in, the, in the wrong the wrong post so it should work yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're going to carry on. So this is the last um, section we're going to do for the coding summer school, oh, not like for the mini school. Um, I just saw some feedback there. Do you use Git GitHub? So uh, only eight people actually use GitHub, which is interesting. Uh, six said no, ten said other. So I'm assuming other. You might mean maybe GitLab or something else. So um, for those for those that said other. Um, what what do you use if you don't use GitHub? Maybe GitLab or something else. So maybe put in the chat if you put other if you if you use GitHub. Please let me know what you what you use instead of GitHub. It'd be interesting to see. So yes, all right. So um, for this example, um, I have um, this is using NLTK. Um, So what the date, what does the date include? So it just has some like random sentences. Um, this is the text data, nothing too fancy, I guess. And uh, I guess there's there's a um, there's a few things you have to know about NLTK or natural language processing, what you're trying to achieve and what you're trying to extract uh, from it. Um, you no, know, certain you know, want to kind of tokenize the data. You want to remove stop words, uh, punctuation, um, uh, again sentiment and, and analysis. There's various things you might want to extract. There's also translation as well. Um, it's a huge field. So in this case, we're going to just maybe apply a few um, functions that are built into NLTK and see what we get. So. Um, all right, so the first thing we're going to do is just tokenize the data that just splits it up into its its uh, different words. And then we're going to apply um, uh, each one, like uh, its parts of speech as well. Um, so we can tokenize it and perform parts of speech. Um, so that'll add two extra columns to the, to the data frame. Um, and then importantly, removing stop words. Um, so, um, so was that, you know, for example, in or on or um, there's a whole list. So when you um, you can import the number of stop words and you compare it and you kind of remove the stop words. So only really keeping the um, the, the the keywords is necessary. Um, and then I think this one. So so this is removing the stop words. And then here we're using spacey. Um, I'll, I'll discuss what we use spacey for, but let's first you know, do a bit of analysis with the um, with NLTK. So we can run that. Uh, 
so I see Jane used Git bash. So to do local version control. Okay, that's fine. Um, so anyone else? There's 11, 11 people that said other. So I mean, by, by Git bash, I mean, that's kind of um, uh, also using, it's using Git ultimately. So maybe I should have used, said use Git, not Git GitHub. But I mean, um, for the other 11 people or 10 people now, I mean, what other version control do you use if, if not GitHub? Um, you can specify it in the chat. Okay, so uh, analysis is done. So let's look at our variable explorer. I can look at our data frame here over there. And we can see um, this is the text or the sentences that we had to work with. And then all the, the first thing was just to tokenize it. So look at each word, extract it, and um, put it in the list. So that's each word is extracted, even the punctuation as well. And then uh, the tag. So now it takes each word and um, adds parts of speech to it. So um, I won't go through all of them, but um, for each word, it just applies uh, the, the relevant parts of speech. So if you maybe want to filter certain words or certain parts of speech, uh, you can um, to it. Um, and then the last one was removing um, stop words. So filtered text. So for example, this one was, um, so for example, this was removed, is is removed, there's removed, first sentence are like, I guess the key, key words in, in the sentence. So that's what remains. So that's what we have the filtered text. Um, and then, you know, there's like I, you, on you know, these words. It just kind of takes the, extracts the, the key words. Uh, this is what we um, you know, kind of, when I remove the, the sub words and kind of keep the, the keywords. Okay, now what do we do with Spacey? Um, I probably can do this with NRTK as well, but I'm going to just use Spacey here. So now we're going to extract, um, you know, certain words that, um, I guess, uh, certain keywords uh, in terms of the noun, nouns and adjectives. I want to extract certain keywords. So um, I do this by creating this little function for this extract keywords. And then um, applying this, applying the um, applying this function. Remember, we've done apply before. Um, we we've learned what apply does to a column. Applies it to each each value in, in in a column, and then stores it in another column called keywords. Okay. Then here we just kind of um, getting uh, the top five keywords from a list of keywords and putting in top keywords. This is just um, not really too necessary just to kind of get some insight into amount of keywords that, that were found, right? So um, the same data frame was added here. So um, in terms of keywords, um, so for example, we have sent we have a sentence and quick brown fox laser dog, these are all keywords. Um, it just filters down further and further the, um, um, the sentences to find you know things that are um, um, relevant. So yes, these are just some features and functions of uh, NLTK that you can use and, and space as well. There, there's a lot more. Um, I already touched on just, just, just a few examples. Um, and again, um, we use pandas um, um, in between. I mean, here I'm applying a, a function and applying creating a new column. So you might do the same thing once you, for example, with machine learning, you might have a model, you want to create a new column, you use it with pandas, right? So you'll use it you, interchangeably with you know, what you're doing. Um, but primarily it's going to be reading the data, sorting it, applying it, and then um, doing any filtering and analysis you want. So pandas you'll use all the time. Um, yeah, so let's see how many people responded. So about 40 people. Um, have have responded so so far on the uh, on the chat or well, on with the form. So thank you. Let me just check any any other comments or questions there. All right. So just to answer the question with, um, I think we had it from Wilco. Um, so single bracket notation, um, it's used to access a single column. 
that will just access a single column from a data frame. Uh, whereas double bracket, um, it will use, I mean, in that case, you can access this, uh, a single um, data frame as well, but it returns the object, right? So not, it won't be a series. So this will be, uh, for example, uh, so this will be, um, show what example I can use here. Let me just use your example over there. So this will return a series, series object, and this will return a data frame uh, object with a single column. All right, so those are the two things to uh, to note about it. Um, in most cases, you're going to use you know um, either either notation to access the the single column. There are some cases where you uh, want to use one or the other. Um, so for example, if you want to perform operations on the entire data frame, it's often easier to use a double bracket um, to select you know, the, a single column um, or adding a, a new column as well. Um, if you want to select multiple columns, um, then you use it to double bracket. So, um, so typically what you'll be, um, when you use a double bracket, um, it's when you want to access multiple columns. So field field names uh, like that, right? So and whatever else you want. So double brackets is more it primarily used for um, accessing multiple columns, whatever that is. Um, single column. This is typically when you're gonna maybe when to um, do some calculation or just you can access it or port it, but like if you wanna multiply two by all the, the, the values in a column you can. So um, hopefully that kind of gives you a bit more insight, Walker. Um, two double brackets is primarily when you're going to be using uh, multiple columns, single bracket um, when you want to access single column and maybe do some calculation. So hopefully that answers your question, Walker. And we answer your clock and I'm done. Thank you. That's all. Good timing. Yeah, no, <laughs> thank you very much, Benjamin. <laughs> you, you finished on the on the dot. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, no, that's excellent. Thank you very much. I, I, I really enjoyed the, the, the conclusion, but I think we should uh, at some stage maybe have a dedicated mini school to, to, to this more machine learning aspect of pandas and surroundings, because I think there will be lots of uh, takers for that. Yeah. It is, was uh, really enjoyable. Um, we had, or, ah, I can see the lots of claps and thumbs <laughs> emerging from the bottom of the screen. Excellent. And hearts. Yeah, so excellent. Perfect. Gee, congratulations. Well done. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. We, we, we had, uh, yeah, you see, a, man, a mini school for machine learning would be wonderful. <laughs> so, Benjamin, what do you do in June? <laughs> no, no, um, I'm just joking. We, we give you a little bit of uh, of, uh, of breathing time, but let's... Uh, let, yeah, let's maybe maybe, we'll maybe next year sometime. Yes, yes, we will start <laughs> planning something on, on, on this, uh, on, on this uh, along those lines. Huh? And in fact, I think that the next month's mini school is also about machine learning, some uh, mm -hmm. uh, some other aspects of deep learning or something. I don't remember the exact title, but uh, yeah. um, please uh, keep an eye on the NITEX website yes. and, the, and the mailing uh, and join the mailing list if you haven't done yet, so so that uh, you receive all the all the announcements in uh, in in due course. Yeah. Benjamin, I think we had already lots of questions. Ah, there is a hands up uh, here uh, by Adeniji. Um, let me allow him to talk, please. You just need to unmute yourself and, and you can ask your question to, to Benjamin. I don't, know, I don't hear. Okay, maybe it was a, a, a mistake. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay, then, uh, um, you know, sometimes uh, um, people, uh, maybe it was a clapping that went into a raised hand, I don't know. Anyway, um, 
Benjamin, it doesn't seem that there are any other urgent um, urgent um, questions. Uh, thank you very much for sharing again the, the GitHub uh, link. I'm sure yeah. there will be lots of uh, of takers to to download the the the, the, the notebooks and the and the and the code for the various lectures. So and and to take part in the in the discussion. Uh, thank you very much. Then, um, yeah, no, then, um, yeah, then I wish everybody uh, a good afternoon and uh, lots of fun uh, playing with pandas. <laughs> cool. Thank you very much. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you, thank you very much, Benjamin. It was really uh, an excellent mini school. Thank you very much.